Earlier this summer, I went to an observation session in the south of France. The location was for Calquier, a small town in Provence near Marseille, with cute narrow streets and wide views over the surrounding hills. The event was organized by Unicellar, a company that was among the very first to introduce the concept of a smart telescope with their EV scope line, and more recently with the Odyssey Pro, which I've already covered here on the channel. Their mission is to develop tools that extend our ability to perceive and interact with the universe and with nature. During this event, they offered a sneak peek at their latest product, still in development, which is another ambitious step in this very direction. Participants were given an overview of the product and the roadmap of when and how it is expected to develop. Then we were asked to test the device and provide feedback on the experience. But what exactly is this new device? Let's take a look together. My name is Lutza and you're watching The Space Koala. The new device is called Envision, and at its core, it is a pair of augmented reality binoculars. The idea is simple but bold, to merge the clarity of traditional optics with digital overlays that guide you through the night sky or the landscape in front of you. The project was first launched on Kickstarter in June 2024, with the first deliveries expected to backers in mid-2026 and general availability planned for 2027. The product I had the chance to try was a nearly finalized hardware design with the software still in development. It is not every day that you can sit down with the developers of an astronomy device and get to provide feedback that will actively shape its final form, so this was an exciting opportunity for me. On paper, the Envision are a pair of 10 by 50 Paro Prism binoculars. They're developed in collaboration with Nikon and use a multi-coated BAK4 glass with a 6 degree field of view and a 5 millimeter exit pupil. They weigh about 1.2 kilograms and they include features that you would expect from any pair of binoculars interpupillary distance adjustment, diopter adjustment, and extendable eye cups. What makes them different though is the augmented reality system built directly into the optical path of the right eyepiece. A micro projector adds contextual information onto the view. Constellation lines, star names, galaxies, or mountain peaks appear as if they're part of the scene. The left eye sees only the natural sky or landscape, while the right eye carries the digital overlay. Your brain then merges the two into a single image so that the view feels integrated rather than separate. The built-in battery powering the AR system is rechargeable via USB-C, promising about 5 hours of AR use per charge, or roughly 1,000 engagements. Without power, of course, they work as regular binoculars. The controls are very simple to learn. On the right-hand side, there is a button to switch the overlay display on or off, and another button to recenter it if it drifts out of alignment. On the left-hand side, there are three more buttons, two that adjust the brightness of the overlay, and a third, the lock button, which gives access to some of the more advanced features that I'll come back to later. These buttons let you control the most basic features of the AR system. So how does it actually know what to display? In order to show the correct contextual information, the binoculars need to know two things at all times, which is where they are and where they're pointing. The position comes from the location information of a connected cell phone retrieved via GPS and transmitted via Bluetooth. This provides precise coordinates including altitude over sea level. The orientation is then determined by a set of three magnetometers built into the binoculars which measure their direction with respect to Earth's magnetic field. This information is then combined with a gyroscope that handles the very last stage of adjustment to ensure small movements are also accounted for. The choice of using three magnetometers instead of just one is deliberate. It introduces redundancy. So if one reading is slightly off or disturbed by 
local magnetic fields. The others can compensate improving overall accuracy and reducing drift over time. In practice, the system is designed to merge these data sources, GPS for the where, magnetometers for which way, and the gyros for how steady to create a consistent orientation reference. Even with this layered approach, small misalignments can occur, especially in situations where the sensors are disturbed or after moving across large angles. To address this, the binoculars allow the user to press a button to bring back the overlay into alignment with the real view. To give you an idea of how the overlay system looks in practice, I used my telescope eyepiece phone adapter to try and record the view through the binoculars. What I hadn't considered though is that my phone, being an iPhone, has a strong magnetic ring used for wireless charging alignment. Having a magnet so close to the binoculars completely disrupted the sensors and made the whole system behave unpredictably. Luckily, I was able to borrow another phone without the built-in magnet and that made it possible to capture a few real views through the eyepiece. Uh, the testing started with the terrestrial mode. The initial pointing was reasonably good, but not perfect. So to align the outlines of the surrounding peaks seen in the overlays with the real ones, I often had to recenter them. Once adjusted, it stayed fairly stable over rotations of about 60 to 90 degrees. Beyond that, some drift became noticeable. The developers told me that they are actively working on further improving this accuracy. At this stage, they're relying on only one of the three magnetometers built into the binoculars. The activation of the other two sensors should bring more stability to the system. The overlay itself was clear and easy to read. It displayed information such as the name of the mountain peak, its altitude and its distance. One of the most interesting features I tried was the target locking. Using the lock button, I could save a specific target that I was looking at and then go back to it later using visual cues that guided me back to it. This made it easy to return to the same point after looking away and also to point them out to others after passing the binoculars over. They could immediately find the same target using the arrows that popped up. You can also connect the binoculars to an app on your phone. You can select a point of interest in the distance directly in the app and the binoculars provide cues to guide you towards that target until it appears in the field of view. The goal of these daytime features is clear. Having peaks, altitudes, and distances appear directly in your view could make these binoculars an interesting tool for hiking and exploration. That said, it is also clear that the terrestrial mode needs more refinement before it will feel fully polished. Now, looking at mountains was cool, but not surprisingly, I was much more curious to see how the Envision would behave at night when exploring the sky. As soon as I pointed the binoculars at the sky and aligned them on a bright star, I could see constellation lines and labels appearing between the stars with the brightest deep sky objects circled and labeled. It was like looking at a planetarium application on my phone and at the sky at the same time. Using the developer app, I was able to select an object and the binoculars would guide me towards it with on-screen cues until I centered it in the field of view. As recommended, once the target was there, I turned off the overlay and continued observing as normal, enjoying a pure visual experience. Turning the overlay on and off so easily makes it so you would only need to use it when you need it and the light of the display wouldn't distract you from actually enjoying the sky. Unfortunately, that night we had to observe the sky through a few holes between the clouds and so this navigation system proved helpful to even those of us who otherwise know the night sky. Okay, so let's do a uh, go to to M13. Okay. Should have it. Oh, wrong direction. Should be there. Let me turn off the screen. It's there. 
For me personally, this was the moment I understood the potential of this instrument. It can be a learning tool, something that helps you build confidence in navigating the night sky while still keeping the experience visual. Identifying and learning constellations and the locations of many bright deep sky objects becomes possible without ever taking your eyes off the sky. So to the obvious question, how much does all this cost? The retail price, once the binoculars are released in 2027, is expected to be $1,500, with a pre-order open on October 1st at a promotional price of $1,000. When it comes to alternatives, there really isn't much to compare it with. The only other smart binocular on the market is the Swarovski AX Vision, but that instrument is designed for a very different use case. It relies on a camera to recognize animals and birds. As such, its form factor is smaller and not meant for astronomical use. It is also in a vastly different price range of $5,000. When it comes to astronomy, the Envision can be seen as a first of its kind, bringing augmented reality to binocular observation. So what's my take? I'll be very clear. The Envision binoculars are still in development. They have quirks, especially during daytime use, but they definitely show a lot of promise. As an amateur astronomer, I was naturally more interested in the nighttime features, which luckily were already more stable. For me, it was a fascinating experience to speak to the engineers behind a product as they develop it and learn about the technical challenges they're facing and understand how they come up with solutions for them. They were very receptive to the feedback I provided, including ideas for future features that I thought would be cool, as well as feedback on the hardware itself. For example, I pointed out the focuser was soft, almost like it had backlash, and they assured me that this is already fixed in the final version of the product. They were very passionate about this project, and I'm not surprised. It is a unique fusion of classic optics and digital assistance. If Unistellar delivers on their promises, it might become a whole new way for people to learn the night sky and enjoy nature. I can totally see these binoculars as a teaching tool, either by yourself or by having someone by your side who points out interesting objects, which you can then find in a matter of seconds. If you would like to find out more about these binoculars, I will put a link down below in the description. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Would you use augmented reality in binoculars or do you prefer a pure optical experience? If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe for more interesting astro content, including a proper detailed field test of the final Envision binoculars as soon as they are ready. Thank you for watching and as always, I wish you clear skies.